Hello, everybody. Welcome again to One Question a Day. The chapter we are discussing is enamel. And the question that we are going to discuss is the structure of mature enamel. A very common question asked either in essay or short notes. So depending upon the structure and the type of question asked, you have to elaborate in detail. We will discuss how to write in detail for all these structures and you can modify your answer depending upon the situations and the question asked, the wordings of the questions. So if this is asked, you have to talk about the composition of enamel, how much is organic, how much is inorganic, the water content, the feature of enamel rods under light microscopy, electron microscopy, the direction of enamel rods, the rods numbers and the ends of rod, how they look like, the structures observed in the enamel, enamel lamellae, enamel tuft, enamel spindles, talk about dentino enamel jungle, junctions, hunter shagas bands, incremental lines, gnarled enamel, neonatal ring, Nasmith's membrane structure, the, the rod structure, direction, number, size, shape, and degree of calcifications, the crystals orientations, directions, and the clinical significance, the difference between primary and secondary dentitions in terms of enamel rod directions, acid etching. So taking a dip into the uh, answers, the composition of enamel is divided into organic and inorganic. Primarily, the inorganic is about 96% the organic and water constitutes 4% and mostly the organic is amylogenin and non-amylogenins. Amylogenins are low molecular weight proteins, non-amylogenins are high molecular weight. They are rich in proline, histidine, leucine and glutamine, whereas non-amylogenins like amyloin, tuftalin, amyloblastins are rich in serine, glycomatic and aspartic acids. Inorganic. 96% is mostly seen as hydroxyapatite crystals with a formula. They are often hexagonal in shape with the water molecules near the center, periphery, and center is occupied by calcium, magnesium, carbonates, and all these are what acid soluble. The enamel rods are formed from hydroxyapatite crystals. Remember the structure is hexagonal shapes. Under light microscopy, they appear as fish scale. Whereas under electron microscopy, they have a classic keyhole like enamel rods. Okay. Under electron microscopy, you see elevation and depressions. Elevations are representing the enamel cap or enamel brooch, larger elevations. Depressions are named as enamel pit. Give a diagram. Elevations, depressions. Elevations are rods. Depressions are the center of the rods. Number of enamel rods varies. The lower lateral incisors, it is about knife edge, it is about 5 million, whereas in the upper first molars, the cusper tips, about you have 12 million per square unit area. Directions, enamel rods are torturous and they fall, they are not in a straight line, they follow a scalloped line. In the deciduous, in the occlusal and the incisal, they are often vertical, and the middle and cervical third, they are more or less horizontal. Uh, in the permanent tooth, the cervical third or the occlusal third, they are vertical, whereas the middle, they are horizontal. As we go to the cervical third, they are stealthy, tightly to an apex. It should be the direction should be like this. This will have a significance because during cavity preparation, you have to remove the unsupported enamel when you are building the floor of the cavity. So, this is an important clinical significance which we will discuss later. So, the direction here has to be not like this, but rather like this, in this direction, okay? Don't make this mistake. It should be directed, oriented in this fashion. Going towards the side. The average diameter of enamel rod is about four millimeters, which is more in the surface and less in the DJ with a ratio of two is to one. And they are longer in the cuspal area than in the cervical area, enamel rods. The rod end formation leads with a central concavity. Cervical area is shallow where the cuspal area is deep. And this may have its clinical significance in the formation of dental caries. 
enamel lamella the structures of enamel lamella they are thin leaf like structures runs from enamel to the dentino enamel junction from the periphery enamel surface to the dentino enamel junctions may rarely penetrate dentin they are developing in the areas of surfaces in say exposed to high occlusal structures and often uncalcified areas of enamel rods they have mostly organic matter and little inorganic matter comparatively to the 96 is to 4 of regular enamel so it will be somewhere in the 92 to 93 range they can be classified into three types type a type b type c type a is poorly calcified enamel rods type b has degenerated cells often seen and associated with unerupted tooth type c has organic material interrupted tooth right so you draw a nice representative uh, diagram of enamel lamella using h&e pencils or a felt pen if you are confident use a felt pen otherwise go with the h&e pencils h&e pencils are preferred enamel tufts enamel tufts are rubbed like hypocalcified structures of enamel that arises from dej and proceeds into enamel unconventionally or opposite to that of your enamel lamella that arise from the surface of the enamel to be drawn here they are opposite they are arising like a tuft of grafts hence the name enamel tuft arise it has organic matter and enamel spindles are extensions of odontoblast into the enamel from dentin crosses the dj and extends into the enamel and they are more common to the cuspal region dentino enamel junctions are scalloped light with a concavity facing the concavity facing the enamel and convexity facing towards the dentin they are not a single line entity and spreads throughout they differentiate between enamel and dentin okay they are just formed prior to the hard tissue formation both odontoblast and subsequent ameloblast secretions they are more pronounced in cuspal regions they are scalloped hunter shaker bands are another structure of enamel that arise mainly due to the difference in the direction of enamel rods and an optical phenomenon they arise from the dj and extends towards the outer surface of enamel they are seen as dark and light bands the dark zones are referred as para zones whereas the light bands are referred as dia zones okay seen in the longitudinal sections and between them they have a differentiation of about 40 degrees inclinations they may form due to the difference in the rhythmic pattern deposition of calcifications incremental lines of red cs or stray of red cs represents the incremental rhythmic deposition pattern of incremental rhythmic deposition pattern whereas this is due to the difference in amount of calcification and optical phenomenon that is our hunter shaker bands here they could be representing hypocalcified and plus hypercalcified structures on cross sectionals they seen as concentric rings whereas on longitudinal sectionals they are seen as round in cuspal surface and oblique in cervical edges they run from the dj to the enamel surface and like your annular ring you have here in the dentin we have lines of von ebner incremental lines of von ebner stray or we have slater in cementum so a very important incremental lines of the uh, red cs question is nal dynamel is an optical illusion caused by the twisting and focusing or intertwining of enamel rods along the cusp more enamel rods are twisted to occupy a less area so that is uh, giving an optical illusion of the enamel rods being squeezed okay seen in the cuspal region and when focused this is called as this is a functional adaptation to withstand most of the stresses that is happening with the cuspal tips functional adaptation clinical significance enamel lamella could serve as a entry point of microorganism site for caries deep enamel fissures caused by this enamel lamella could lead to accumulation of foods and caries in the pits the other clinical significance that you need to mention is the direction of enamel rods in pediatrics it is horizontal in the cervical third whereas here it is tilting like in this direction so unsupported enamel may be needed to be removed while uh, preparing cavities in the cervical area 
Namal Lemele, of course, serve as a nidus for oh, caries formations. Dentino enamel junctions, you prepare your cavity just in the dentin, just below your DEJ. The clinical significance, why you need to know about the DEJ is you don't prepare the cavity floor in the enamel, but in the dentin, just below your DEJ. Okay, that brings us to a end to the discussion on the histological structure of enamel as to be written in your exams, right? Uh, we will meet again another day for with an, another new questions. Still then, oh, uh, happy reading. Stay connected with this channel for more questions.